Right. Now, there's one last thing I'd like to bring up before we get into some examples of conservation of energy, and that is the idea of what we call a conservative and non-conservative force. To illustrate the difference between these two concepts, I'd like to talk about an example here. Let's say that on the left-hand side here, you're in this building, and you walk in, and you're on the first floor of this building. So I'm going to draw a little person right here. Let's say you're standing right there, and you need to make it over here to the top floor. There are two different ways that you could do that, right? There's an elevator shaft in the middle, and there's a stairwell that wraps around the elevator shaft. No matter which path you take, you'll start here, and you'll end here. So your starting place and your uh, ending place are the exact same. The difference is how you get there, right? Walking up the stairwell is going to be a much longer path, essentially, than it will be to just go up the elevator and get out on the top floor. If you consider the gravitational potential energy of the person on the first floor and the top floor, is it different if they take the stairs or the elevator? Right? And the answer is no, it, it isn't. They start and end at the same height. So their initial potential energy and final potential energy are equal. In other words, it doesn't matter which path the person takes. The amount of work that the earth did on them or what you could consider potential energy is the same. We call gravity a conservative force because the work that gravity does on an object does not depend on the path that that object takes. And at this point, gravity is the only conservative force that we're familiar with. Now, when it comes to a non-conservative force. I'd like you to think about uh, your GPS. And if you've ever used your GPS, you've probably been given a different, a few different selections for a route that you'd like to take from point A to point B. So I'd like to point out that, let's say you're right here at this red dot. This is point A. That's your starting position. And then you end over here at point B. And that's where you're going to end up. And hopefully we agree that Point A and point B are the exact same, right? So you're both going to, you know, no matter what route you take, you're going to start at A and end at B. However, the path that you take between A and B is not the same, right? This path is 117 miles. This one's 121 miles. This one's 116 miles. And so depending on the path that you take, you will travel a different distance. If you consider friction for a moment, on which path do you think friction will do the most work on your car. In other words, which path would you take to maximize the amount of work or the amount of friction that happens, right? Well, probably this path, right? The longest path. The longer I'm driving, the more time and the more distance that friction has to act on me. And so what I see here is that even though we start and end in the same location, the path that we take matters. And if we consider friction as a non-conservative force, friction does different amounts of work on this object depending on the path that it takes. This is the definition of a non-conservative force. A non-conservative force is any force where the work that that force does does depend on the path that that object takes. And this ends up being most of the forces that we've looked at in this class. Applied forces, friction, tension. You can imagine that instead of point A and point B being uh, GPS locations, you were trying to drag a box on the floor between point A and point B. You can imagine that the more work you do on the box will be required the longer you are having to lug that box around. So anytime we have a friction or an applied force or tension or something like that, that is a non-conservative force. That force, the work that that force does is going to depend on the path that that object takes. Um, and so this is an idea that I'd like you to, um, you should know this, uh, this sometimes comes up on the AP exam in terms of just a definition of a conservative and non-conservative force, but um, it should be uh, very apparent when we're solving problems um, whether or not the work done by that object uh, depends on the path that that object takes. So think about this idea of uh, path dependence when you think of conservative and non-conservative forces.